Today we're taking a look at one of the most popular airbrushes, and this one is the Badger Patriot 105. Now I had one of these years ago, but I ended up giving it away just because I have so many airbrushes. But Badger was running a sale recently, and I decided to pick this one up for review. I ordered this one directly from Badger, so the packaging here is going to be slightly different than what you'd get if you bought it at retail. And just like all my other airbrush reviews, I purchased this one with my own money, so this is a completely independent review. I'm a huge fan of Badger. I think they make excellent products, and the Patriot 105 is no different. This feels great in the hand. This airbrush is equipped with a slightly larger needle and nozzle size at 0.5 millimeters. This makes a Patriot more of a general use airbrush. You shouldn't have any problems spraying thicker paint through it. And you could also use it to get in to get some decent detail. What I like about a nozzle of this size is that I could use any paints right out of the bottle, like golden high flow acrylics, wicked colors, or Createx illustration colors without having to dilute them. And with this large gravity fed paint cup, which is 10 milliliters or about a third of an ounce, you're able to add plenty of paint for wide coverage like base coating models or backgrounds in fine art. This rear handle is equipped with a cutaway and you could use this to quickly flush out any clogs in the nozzle. But the main thing that I love about the rear handles of Badger airbrushes is that you can quickly access the needle while the handle's still on. When you're painting with an airbrush, there's a lot of times where you need to reset the needle. And in order to do this, you need to unscrew the chuck, slightly pull out the needle, and then press it back in so it makes a nice seal with the nozzle. I find myself doing this pretty often while I'm painting, so on every other airbrush I own, I always remove the back handle. I never paint with it. But with Badger airbrushes, I always leave the rear handle on because I have easy access to that needle. This is an incredible design and I'd love to see it implemented by other airbrush brands. Now the build quality and the chrome finish on the Patriot 105 are okay. It's nothing special and it's definitely not up there with Harder and Steenbeck or Iwata. But it's definitely a big step up from some of those cheaper brands like the one I reviewed on this channel which was called the Point Zero or one of those Masters airbrushes. Now the reason I love Badger airbrushes so much is not because of their build quality, it's the way they spray and their controllability. If you care about the responsiveness of an airbrush like I do, Badger makes one of the best products out there. I know I've said before that I think the most responsive airbrush I've ever used is the Sotar 2020, and this Patriot 105 is not that far behind it. So just like usual, before we get into the paint test, let's break down this airbrush so I can show you the internal parts. I know I've said this in other reviews, but Badger airbrushes are the most annoying to break down and reassemble. Fortunately, the head assembly on the Patriot 105 is much easier to break down than the Sotar 2020, but the spring assembly and the trigger lever are very frustrating and I'll show you why in a minute. So after unscrewing this part, which Badger calls the tube shank, we have access to the needle spring assembly. You could use a small brass screw on the top here to adjust the spring tension. If you ever notice your airbrush spraying a small amount of paint without pulling back on the trigger, Try tightening the spring screw so that the needle forms a better seal with that nozzle. On every one of my airbrushes, I keep these screws tightened all the way down to give me better control. If I unscrew this spring screw, I have access to the needle guide and the spring. This trigger design is the same one you see in almost all Badger airbrushes. It's round on top and it's very comfortable to use. But behind this, we have the floating trigger lever. Most other airbrushes have this part connected to that rear spring assembly. But on this one where it's floating, it's extremely difficult to get back in when you're reassembling the airbrush. I've been breaking down and cleaning my Badger airbrushes for over 10 years now, and to this day, this part still gives me trouble. Moving along to the head assembly, this consists of three parts. This first part is a spray regulator, which regulates the airflow over that nozzle. Once this is removed, we can see that the head cap has six holes in it to evenly spray that air over the needle and nozzle. And now after unscrewing this head cap, we have easy access to the nozzle. I love this nozzle design. It's floating and it's a large piece, so it's very easy to swap out and replace when it breaks. This is pretty similar to what you'd see in an Iwata Eclipse, and out of all the nozzle designs, this is definitely my favorite. So the individual parts on Badger airbrushes are pretty good, they're solid, and they last a long time. Even with this video sped up about 20 times the speed, you can still see that I'm struggling with that back trigger lever. It's just one of the quirks that comes with owning a Badger airbrush and you get used to it. So from here, let's move along to the spray test, and this is where Badger airbrushes really excel. With the needle fully retracted, spraying at 20 psi in Photoshop here, I measure a spray angle of around 24 degrees. A spray angle of 24 degrees is actually very wide. As you can see from this chart here of all the other airbrushes I reviewed, this is one of the widest spray patterns. This makes the Patriot 105 spray pretty similar to the Alwada Eclipse, although the spray angle is slightly larger. You're going to be able to get excellent wide coverage with the spray angle like this. It works great for spraying in backgrounds and fine art or if you're painting larger models. 
If you're looking for detail work, this airbrush is going to be okay. It's not going to be great, and it's not going to be anywhere near the quality or finish you'd get from an Iwata Micron or a Sotar 2020. But if you hold it really close to the surface, you'll be able to get some decent detail in there. Spraying through the atomometer at 20 PSI, three and a half inches away, I get a spray angle of around 5.8 meters per second. This is basically what I'd expect from a general use airbrush like this one. Again, it's similar to the Iwata Eclipse, and it's just going to help you spray those thicker paints. But if you're going in for detail work, a higher airspeed like this is not ideal. It's much more comfortable to get closer to your substrate with a lower airspeed of around 4 meters per second or so when you're painting in detail work. The Patriot 105 is not designed for small, intricate work, but you're still able to do some with it. If you really want detail, make sure you look at the Sotar 2020, the Iwata Micron, or the GSI Krios PS771. When I press down on the trigger for air, I get a distance of about one millimeter. This is short and very comfortable to use. When I pull back for paint, I get an almost instant response rate. Just like the Sotar 2020, this number is just too small for me to measure. I get around a quarter of a millimeter or less. And to me, this is what makes Badger airbrushes so special because I know when I'm spraying, if I pull back the smallest amount, it's going to spray the exact amount of paint every single time. And this is very important when you're painting because you eventually build up muscle memory and you know exactly how far to pull back to apply a certain amount of paint. In my opinion, Badger's right up there with Iwata in controllability. They're really two of the best brands out there today. So let's move along to the painting test, which is of a portrait I just started. For this painting, I've been using my Iwata Micron for it, but I decided to switch over to this Patriot 105 to see how well it works. The first thing I notice is that this airbrush definitely wants to spray a lot more paint than a detail airbrush. With that wide spray angle and higher airspeed, this one definitely puts out a pretty high volume of paint. But since the control of this airbrush is so good, I have no problems adding the correct amount of paint that I want. This airbrush atomized the paint perfectly, and I'm using CreateX Illustration colors here. I'll have a link down below for the Patriot 105, but make sure you shop around and look at some other places because you can usually buy this airbrush for right around $80. And to me, that price is outstanding because at half the price of the Awada Eclipse, which goes for around $160 to $180 US dollars, you're getting an airbrush that performs very similarly. This would be a great option for a beginner who's looking to purchase their first high-end airbrush, but make no mistake, this is definitely a professional painting tool. There's nothing I can't do with this that I can do with an Iwata Eclipse, and to me that comes down to the response rate and the controllability of the Patriot 105. And as I'm painting this portrait, this is honestly as good as it gets. Switching over to the line test, the Patriot 105 is going to spray very similar to every other airbrush I reviewed. But since that spray angle is wider, you're going to get a line that's slightly larger. I measured these at about a half a millimeter. And last but not least, let's move along to a nozzle check using some soapy water. And unfortunately, this one has a lot of air leaks. I tighten this down multiple times and unfortunately I get the same results. Sadly, this is common in a lot of airbrush brands. I hate seeing this. The way to fix it is to buy some beeswax, add it on the threads and screw it back together. I love that Badger keeps their prices low and their airbrush is affordable for everyone, but I just wish they improved their quality control to be up there with Iwata and Harder and Steenbeck. You can see next to the Iwata Eclipse, the Badger Patriot 105 looks very similar. Both are outstanding airbrushes and you can't go wrong with either one of them. If you want an all around great general use airbrush at under a hundred US dollars, the Badger Patriot 105 is a great option. It's a professional painting tool at an introductory price. So I hope this video is helpful. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time.